we will continue looking at decision trees. So like I said there is a little bit more uh, about uh, trees that I wanted to look at and then uh, we will actually do uh, an example today okay, of how to construct trees. So starting from data set how will you actually construct a decision tree right. Okay. So we already looked at uh, couple of issues with regard to decision trees. What are the what are the things we looked at? A. Well, how will you? Huh? No, we didn't talk about that yet. So, I mean, we looked at how will you pick a splitting attribute, right? Right. What is the splitting value in the splitting attribute? So, how large you should go a tree, right? And how do you prune it? Okay. These are the issues that we looked at. Right, but there are several other questions that we could ask. Right. So when we talk about splitting attributes and split points, inherently we are assuming that our attributes are continuous. Right. So that we can talk about a split point. Right. So what happens if I have categorical attributes? So what are categorical attributes? Things that take some discrete values, right? So it could be things like color, right? Red, blue, and green, right? Or it could be things what you normally would believe are continuous variables, like age, right? But for a variety of reasons, they have been recorded as discrete values young middle aged old right so so most most surveys and things like that if you look at it when you answer these things you know they don't ask you for your exact age they ask you are you lesser than 25 or you between 25 and 34 or greater than 35 or things like that right so somehow it's discretized either by for reasons of anonymization or uh, for convenience or whatever you end up discretizing the values right so you quite a lot of circumstances in fact especially if you are uh, involving with the uh, in involved with um, medical domain right or with um, this kind of marketing kind of a domain right you will end up having discrete attributes right so in which case what is the meaning of a split point yeah if it is binary yes right you have some things like suppose it's color Right. So, so if we think about it. If I have Q, right. So that's the key part here. Think of Q unordered values. Right. Age it itself has some kind of ordering in it. So I can still fake it. You know, I might have only three different age entries, but I can think of it as okay, young or middle aged and old right or young and middle aged or old right it does typically usually does not make sense to look at young and old and middle aged you know because it is I mean I can say you can fake it you can think of it as a uh, ordered attribute and then you can do that but uh, suppose it is unordered right. So essentially what you would really have to do is think of splitting the values into two subsets right. so like I said let us say take color as an example right I might have to put Okay, red, blue, and yellow into one group, and green and I don't know. Give me a few more color names. That's a, that's about how I how much I know. Magenta, purple. Magenta, purple. Yeah. Okay, so all of this into another group, right? And uh, and so like that, right? I have to figure out some way of splitting it into two. Okay. So how many possible splits are there like that? I have Q values. <coughs> Two power two okay good yeah right so that many possible combinations that is not really not going to be feasible for me to go over all of them in order to pick the split point right so that is exactly what we were doing right if you remember the algorithm from the last class you are actually going over all possible split points 
and we said there are only finitely many such possible split points because we only have to look at n of them right but now we have to look at even though i have only n values i mean n data points for training right i potentially have to look at 2 power q minus 1 split points right so that's not going to be feasible so there are two ways of handling this actually there are three ways of handling this uh, the first one is if you have a you have a 0 1 outcome basically that is this is what people would call a binary classification problem if you have a binary classification problem you can do one clever trick what is it that you can do any ideas no we don't want to explode the number of attributes right i'm i'm making it some something very restricted here right i'm looking at binary classification problems so is that something that you can think of that you can do here so what exactly are you looking at when you are trying to find a split point what you are trying to do is trying to make sure that your prediction right when i do it on one half versus other half is more accurate than the prediction i did on the data as a whole before the split correct so that is exact, exactly what you are looking at from a split point you are trying to find a split point such that <coughs> it is more accurate than the other right so what you can do essentially here is you can pick one of the classes let us say you pick class 1 right let us say i have 5 predictors uh, or I am sorry not yeah I have 5 predictors so predictors are this unordered values right so let us say I have 5 values for a particular thing let us say colors right red blue green yellow magenta right so let us say I have 5 colors now what I will do is I will take red okay I look at all the data points that have color red okay I will see what fraction of them are class 1. then I will take all data points that have color blue, I will see what fraction of them are class 1, likewise for the other 3 colors, okay. does it make sense so far, I look at each color, figure out what fraction of that color, that I mean data points having that color are of class 1, now I will arrange them in some order, ascending order let us say of this probability. Right. when I say fraction it means what fraction that is a probability that a data point having color red will be class 1 right so fr from the training data right so I will ascend it arrange it in ascending order of this probability then I will just treat it like any other ordered variable and then I will split right does that make sense so why does this help us think about it a little bit right suppose I suppose I have I put it in some order right let us say that uh, right. so red has uh, 0.2 percent of the data having class 1 right Let us say suppose something like this. <coughs> no, they do not be. Why should they be? I am just looking at each fraction of the data points with color red that were class 1. More than one? Color. No, no, no there is one attribute that says color of the data point okay whatever is it the one attribute that says color of the data point right and that that attribute can take five values red blue green yellow or magenta right suppose it is taken color red I look at what fraction of those data points that have color red are of class 1 right suppose I find that there are 10 data points that have color red and two of them are of class 1 then it is 0.2. 
Okay. So, obviously, so these numbers do not have to sum to 1, right, because they are only for that, right. Now, you can tell me what is a good place to split this. Okay, before somebody asks me a question about what if it is exactly 0 0.5, okay, there you go. Either the y or the n. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.45 and 0.55. Ah. You would rather choose some, some, so some, that some property it. where you have a lot, lot of one work. thing. So, in which case r would be preferred. See, how we go about doing the lot of one thing. Ha, ah, good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know how to do this. Come on, pick a pick a thing and tell me what. You know the Gini index. Huh? You know the you know Gini index or information gain or something like that, right? So all of you know that all misclassification error. Let's use misclassification error as the splitting criterion. So, for me to find an optimal split, I do not really have to consider R and Y going to one part, right, B, G and M going to the other side, right. So, it will either be here or here or here or here or here, I mean that is a really bad attribute to pick if it is here, right, but it will only be left to right, right. So, these are the only subsets I need to consider. I do not have to consider all of the other subsets, right, does it make sense? It's kind of you can intuitively see this here, right? So since this fraction of the class one keeps going up, right? So it either you break here or here or here or here. So that's that's a heuristic for this, right? In fact, uh, with a little bit of uh, uh, thing, you can show that for two classes, right? You will get the same optimal split, right? By using this method, as you would get by exhaustively searching through all the splits. Okay. Is that clear? I am seeing too many puzzled looks. We did decision trees day before yesterday. Do you remember decision trees? Okay. So, split points, if I have categorical attributes, split points are going to be like subsets, right. subsets of the values the attribute can take. Right. So, split points would be, okay. do I consider red and green to one side, blue, yellow, magenta to the other side, okay. that is good potentially a combination, right. So, in this case, I am saying you do not have to worry about all possible subsets. All you need to do is, after you have done an arrangement like this, okay, wherever you choose to split, depending on the criterion you are using. So, wherever you choose to split, right. So, everything to one side will form one subset, everything to the other side will form another subset. And these are the only subsets that you need to consider while you are trying to find the optimal split. You do not have to consider all the 2 power q minus 1 minus 1 subsets. Okay.